So it's my joy to welcome a dear friend to the stage next, someone who's been in this movement long before I and who I've learned so much from and who's never equivocated. We've had some talk um, you know, at this conference about the abuses that exist in treatment centers. But if they followed the model that exponents created, there would be no abuses. <laughs> Although Howard is a little bit annoying. There's just that. <laughs> just a little bit. And he gets more letters in the New York Times than me. That's the most annoying thing at all. But it's my joy to welcome to the stage Howard Josepher. try to tell her about those letters, you know, I'm batting about zero, zero, one, because I submit so many letters, but, so, anyhow, I'm uh, honored to be here at the closing plenary and look at you guys from another perspective. Uh, but while we're here, we can't forget what's going on out there. And what's going on out there is an epidemic with tens of thousands of drug users are dying from overdoses. More people than ever are turning to dangerous drugs to alleviate their pain and suffering. Make no mistake about it. This epidemic is happening because so many of our fellow countrymen feel the need to self-medicate their pain. It's not the first time that tens of thousands of drug users were dying. At the height of the AIDS epidemic, injecting drug users were becoming infected and dying from AIDS-related illnesses. In a way, we've been here before. We came up with something to stop those thousands of people from dying. And we stopped them from dying. We prevented those deaths. Because what we came up with was something called harm reduction. We need to help people deal with their pain. They need treatment, and not just medication-assisted treatment. We need to help people to talk about what's going on for them, to express what's going on inside, so that we can help them cope with their pain, deal with their pain, alleviate their pain. We need to show them how to make take better care of themselves and make better choices. But what's going on, in my perspective, and it's been going on since we started harm reduction, is that those of us here, those of us who go to harm reduction coalition conferences, harm reductionists, we're over here. Traditional drug treatment people are over here, two separate silos. And we're supposed to be helping people. There was a conference in New York State of all substance abuse providers in the state agency. And of the maybe the thousand people that are here, there's only one other person in this room besides me that was at that conference. The traditional drug treatment need a shot of harm reduction. Yeah. 
We need to come away from this one-size-fits-all treatment and engage individuals without judgment and support them in a recovery of their choosing. From my perspective, the traditional drug treatment world is desperate. They need to learn about the compassionate ways of harm reduction, to meet people where they're at, to engage people, and bring more people into treatment. Our own government tells us that of the millions of people who are problematic drug users, only 10% of them ever get any help or treatment. The time has come where it is no longer enough to come to the reform conference, the, D, the uh, harm reduction conferences, and con congratulate ourselves for how far we've come, and we've come very far. We need to show up at our cities, our towns, our states, traditional drug treatment conferences and meetings. Show up, represent, speak up, teach people about harm reduction. We can't, we can't be satisfied. So many people, so many people I love in this room who now are working in the harm reduction field and there's funding. God bless. People are getting paid. God bless. But tens of thousands of people are dying out there. And we've got to find a way to engage them. And the best way in my 50 years in this field, my, the best way that you can engage somebody is through a harm reduction process. So let's take our message to the powers that be, to the traditional tr treatment providers, the traditional policy makers, and share our stories, share our, our, our magic. Because there's love in this room, and that's what the people out there need now. And that's the only way we're going to stop the dying. <laughs>